These adorable round macrame coasters are not only an eye-catching addition to your table decor, but they're also super easy to make and you only need to master two knots. The only problem many people have is that they don't stay flat. But I did some digging or knotting and found a formula that works. So from now on, your coasters will be perfectly round and flat. Keep watching if you're new to macrame and this is your first time making a macrame coaster. Or you can skip to minute three where I start adding cords to the new rows. Watch until the end though for additional tips and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There will be many more macrame videos to come. To make this macrame coaster, you're going to need one long filler cord and shorter working cords, three per row. You can check in the subscription below for the exact measurements for each row. Now let's get started. So take your long uh, filler cord and make a little loop like this. Then fold your working cord, one of the working, first working cords for your first row in half and find the other end. So we're going to make the first lark's head knot here above two layers of the filler cord. So your loop kind of goes around and again through our reverse lark's head so that there's there are two filler cords inside the lark's head as such. Okay, pull it tight. Now I am going to add two more exactly the same way with the filler cord inside twice. Now that we have our first three working cords attached with the reverse lark's head onto our filler cord, we're going to pull this circle tight. So I'm going to pull on the longer end and it's going to start rounding up. There we go. So it's a round or maybe it's more like a triangle. This we will cut later. So I'm just leave it at the back. And now we're going to start making rounds around our central loop while adding cords as we go. So I like to always attach my work to the surface. That helps me in not pulling this filler cord too tight, which is always a problem. And um, it also helps with the, with the knotting itself. So I'm using a styrofoam, but you could use a macrame board or however, however you prefer what you have uh, available for you. So now we're going to start the second row and we're going to add three cords onto it, more or less equally distanced, which in this case, obviously we have one added cord here, one here, and one here. So we're going to add um, a new cord right here, here, and here. Let's do it. That's our first cord, first added cord for the second row. And now it's time to make the first clove hitches. I'm going to clove hitch these two with the filler cord inside them. And if you don't know the, the clove hitch, have a look at my video that should be on the screen. But I'm also going to show you now how to make a clove hitch. So your working cord comes from below. The filler cord goes on top of it. And here you bring the working cord over the filler cord and through this loop that you created. So it makes a loop like that around the filler cord. Keep your filler cord straight. Tighten that and we repeat the same process. So over, under and tighten. And that is one clove hitch or double half hitch. You can also call it that. And then we repeat one and two. All right. And now we add the second cord here and then the third cord here. So with the reverse Lark's head, just like before, we add one cord there. Then we make two clove hitches. Now, last one of the second row, 
last added cord here. And now I'm actually going to cut this one away. Bye bye. And then now we just have two more cloth hitches left to finish our second row. So now we finished our second row and we're going to start on the third one. Let's count how many working cords we have in our, our coaster. So this is the filler cord, so that doesn't get counted. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So if I divide twelve by three, that equals to four. So theoretically, if I need to add three cords into the next row, I should add one every four chords, right? So our last added chords are here, here, and here. This is where we added, added chords on the second row. So there's already two chords here. And we said every four, every four chords, we need to add a new one. So I'm going to count from the last added chord. This is the last chord of the second row. So one, two, three, four. That means I'm going to add a chord here. And then one, two, three, four. I'm going to add one here and also here. Now, the way I like to uh, indicate for myself that I'm adding chords is I kind of make a, like a space for it. So I know it's here. Is I push them away. So let's do two more. Two more club hitches here. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to add the first chord of the third row here because I have four that I knotted with a club hitch and the last added chord is here. And then I'm going to take the next four that I'm going to knot and I know that the next added chord needs to be here. So that was four, and I'm going to add a chord there. This is the second chord that I'm adding to the third row. Adding it there, and then I'm going to knot another four chords with clove hitches. Here we go. Now we've finished our uh, third row and we need to do our fourth. Now to start the fourth row, let's count how many chords we have, which is six, six and six. So that would mean if you wanted to add three, three new chords onto the next row, you would have to add one after every six chords. Now that we're going to start from here with our filler chord and we count six, that would mean that we need to add a chord right after where we last added a chord. And then the same would happen here and here as well. But we don't want that. I don't want to start adding chords always next to where we last added the chord. So we're actually going to put it on the seventh. We put it here after seven chords, you add another one. And then again, then we go back and then we go back to six chords. So then after six chords, you add one. And after six chords, you add one. So let's do that. All right, here we are. This is what your work should look like after your fourth row. Right now we have six, eight, eight, and eight working chords in our work, meaning that on the next row, every new chord should be added after each eight chords. But we don't want to add the new chord right next to the old new one, old new added chord. So instead, we're going to add one more chord there. So I want you to add the new chords after nine chords. So nine here, but also nine here. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine here and also nine at the very end. So every nine chords, add a new chord on the fifth row. 
And now here we are at the end of the fifth row and I've got some good news for you. No more counting. All right. All that you need to do is make sure that you add a new chord in between all these chords that you have added. So one is here. In between these two, you'll need to add somewhere, more or less in the middle. If it's here, 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 it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be somewhere in here one somewhere in here and then the next one between this and the chord that you'll be adding here. So three chords on every row and keep going until you're finished. If at any point you feel like your, um, your coaster is not completely flat, what I recommend you to do is hold it against the table and push inwards from the sides. This should uh, loose up some of the tension in the cord and, uh, and make it a little bit more flat. And maybe you can smooth it out so that uh, it's perfectly round as well on the edges. I've resolved a couple of times a little bit uh, wonky coaster just by pressing it from the sides. Once your coaster is the, the right size, then all there is left to do is to cut and trim. I'm going to leave about two centimeters. First, I'm going to just roughly cut them. These are not the best scissors. Roughly cut them around and later on I'll trim a little bit more. Once you've cut the edges, it's time to unravel them. I use just a normal normal comb, but you can also use a pet brush. It would work just fine. This takes a while. And here we go at the very end. We're going to smoothen out the frayed edges. This might take a bit as well. You can also use um, a tape measure or a ruler. I'm just gonna go like this. At the end, I like to just measure around that it's roughly everywhere the same, uh, same way. And voila, a very flat macrame coaster.